hello <clears throat> i know I'm, I'm a bit late today so sorry about that uh today i want to talk about the, there's a video that has been doing the rounds i'll share it in the link after i'm done in the video uh some people are at an were at an mpesa and then some thugs just came in a lot of thugs came in i think they were around four or five and then he it's bad but okay it's still funny to some extent because people are coming to shop just to buy some some stuff or to deposit their cash because i think it was an mpesa and then all of a sudden they're caught up in this robbery they're trying to run away they're being pulled back so I, okay i feel sorry for them but okay sometimes things can be funny even though they are they're a bit ha hard to take there's actually this guy with his headphones and then they just left him with his knee with his headphones they took his phone so the dude has headphones with no anyway so it was a bit sad and people have been talking about that and i thought i'd, I'd, I'd touch on that issue a bit because i believe that robberies my will increase uh mostly because the economy is doing badly so people will seek more ways of uh, of finding uh income and one of them shall include robbery so that might persist there's another guy uh, i saw it online who was robbed in the city center they took everything they only left him with the underwear so that was a bit sad okay so these stories are fine to us because they are not they don't affect us at this time but in that moment they are devastating just devastating i remember one day i was robbed at kencom i was just coming from i think it was sometime after high school i'm happy i'm happy i'm coming from taskies shopping on the side shopping on this side and then all of a sudden some dudes in front of me some on my side uh, it was it, it was bad and it was bad and uh, i don't know how you guys feel when somebody robs you but i felt defeated because i i now what do i do because it was me and i was taking care of my bro and we were only two of us uh at home at that time and now i don't have any cash and then i felt angry as in how go and look for your own money stop looking for for other people's money so i felt really really angry like i could beat someone and i can't beat someone and i also felt that uh vengeful vengeful i wanted to look for these people where they i wanted to any it was just infuriating and i'm sure at times you guys feel the same when when they happen to you and that's why we have these attitudes uh different reactions to those situations and i wanted just to touch on them so that we might see uh, how society, how we are doing as a society so anyway why do people steal so let's talk about that do they steal because of poverty do they steal because of opportunity like there's money there let's go for it do they steal because they are greedy why do people steal in my own humble opinion i do not believe that people steal because of poverty it is never there are poor people who would never go into stealing and i want to quote a story uh by ken saruriwa it's called africa kills our son and i want to give this one as an example to to people it's a story about three guys sazan jimba and then areta and then he's writing a letter to his girlfriend zole they're going to kill him because he was a robber and uh he's writing like his last testament not his last testament but his last words on this earth and it's a bit it's a sad story so i thought i might just talk about it a bit so when people say it's poverty this is what uh the narrator says in africa kills the sun he talks about a prostitute that he met and the prostitute told him this some girls choose to be secretaries in offices others choose to be nurses she has chosen prostitution as a career and even uh, the narrator uh, says that he he made a choice to become a robber it's always a choice nobody forces you into robbing other people i'll touch on that a bit but it's it, nobody forces you into that again just because we mentioned prostit okay that I, I think i'll touch on later and then is it a matter of opportunity because this guy the narrator he used to work in the ministry of defense that was in nigeria according to the story and he saw widespread looting there he just saw widespread looting there and he did not loot he chose not to loot so 
eventually they will condemn him as a robber but at that point at that point he had the opportunity to loot everybody was telling let's go for it let's go for it. but he chose not to so based on these two on africa kids the son you might see that uh stealing is not a matter of poverty it's a choice people choose to be different careers and that's a career they've chosen people do not steal because of opportunity many people have that opportunity and they do not do so, choose that we are only left with one other choice and that's greed people steal because they are greedy and that's the and that's the sad part about it it's never because you're poor it's never because you are you have opportunities just because you're greedy okay so some people might ask when uh some people might disagree with that because they might say hey no at certain times you don't have anything you need to you need to to do something about it so i wanted to give it from a kind of like a church perspective uh the church says that there is a right to property that's what the church says not even the government the church and god himself uh, he gave Abraham stuff, so it comes from God. Private property comes from God, and it is your right to have it. And thou shalt not steal, of course, yeah. But there's a caveat, right? Because the church also adds that that does not negate the fact that everybody, everything was given for man, for every man, basically. Let me just use the right, the exact words. The right to private property does not do away with the original gift of the earth to the whole of mankind, right? So that, that that's an important uh, way that the church puts it in two ways: right to private property and uh, a gift to the whole of humankind. And this is where where the importance comes in. If I am starving, there is no food, there is no the starvation in the nation, and then there's somebody there with an entire granary of food, with uh, cattle, with everything, then, and he does not share, then I go and steal. That would not be morally incorrect, because he has chosen to stay with a gift that was given to the whole of mankind. And in that time, the right to property does not take hold, take precedence over the, the gift of humankind. So I just wanted to add that, right? Uh, but you cannot, you cannot call it moral. If if I have maize, uh, sorry, if if I, if I have meat and you can survive on maize, then you come and steal my meat. Then that's morally wrong, even if you have no meat, because. Uh, you can survive on grain so the church only gives that caveat only when you cannot survive on anything else when you don't have anything else so that's just a point okay some people say that uh, sometimes you don't okay i wanted to add something about uh the africa kills the sun he says i was not going to join it i wanted to beat them and took upon it myself to wage a war against them in no time they had gotten rid of me they had dismissed me when you go into an organization and you say, ah, everybody's stealing. Everybody's stealing. So let's just steal. It doesn't, it doesn't justify what you're doing. Because you still have a choice not to steal. You have a, still have a choice to beat them back. And at the end of the day, they might dismiss you. But that choice remains. And it does not justify what you, are, what you will do. And then, uh, yeah, so that, that's what I wanted to add about that. And then there are people who might ask, what should we do when someone steals from us? Like uh, mob justice, the usual that, arrest them or let them go or humiliate them. Arresting them is the best choice and giving them to the authorities and uh, letting them go is a bad choice. It's just very bad. I want to give an, a particular experience. There's a time that people were trying to more to beat somebody around here and I had to go in and step in. I was alone, and but then another mother came, and now we are two. We are two against, I think, thirty or fifty people. And uh, I called the police. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. When the police came, uh, they said, "I'm Jamaliza Kazi," because what they wanted was for the crowd to kill those people, and then they just come and collect bodies. You get. 
because the police don't want to deal with arrest and all that stuff so it's something we need we, we, we need to really check as a society and that, that was an eye opener for me humiliate them there's a, another time I'm there was me and my friend his name is Gerard and we were at a supermarket and we saw somebody standing outside the supermarket Mimi ni muizi wa Colgate and all that stuff I stole Colgate and stuff and we felt angry we felt angry how could you humiliate people like this we felt angry so we went there and we talked to the supermarket uh, uh, i think manager and then we we just we let her have it but at the end of the day they chose what they chose to do and that was sad uh again i want to say uh criminals expect that they expect you to humiliate them and that's why the from africa kills us and this guy says i had them say as we tripped out of the court one spectator actually spat at us as we walked into the waiting black maria we don't change hearts hate na hate, hate and hate does not change hearts the criminals expect violence from us but if you give them if you give them uh how do you say if you're not violent with them they might change their minds just saying okay so there's beating them pa 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 beating beating them on most people of us resort to that and here is what uh africa kills the sun says a history of violence of murder of disregard for life trying to beat up people uh does not do anything it just inculcates a certain culture within society it brings out the worst in us because we have created now a culture of disregard for life even a criminal has the right to life has the right to due process and if that process is not working like the police your problem is with the police not with that criminal because criminals are there they steal that's what they do that's their profession but these other professionals they're supposed to to catch the thieves so this one professional is not working and you need to to to, to deal with that again uh the guy from Africa kills Hassan continues says they will march to their rat holes on empty stomachs with tails enough to fill a Sunday evening a Saturday evening miserable wretches and that's what we are miserable wretches how would somebody who has peace in his life who has contentment in his life find solace in beating another person uh somebody who truly loves himself would never hurt another somebody say that if you're beating someone then there's something inherently wrong inside of you there's an emptiness inside of you and that's a problem you need to deal with that and that's why from africa kills the sunny says miserable wretches and most of them are poor because they'll go back home as they say on their empty stomachs and that's okay that's life so beating them it says more a lot of more about us not about them and it does not solve the the situation it just entrenches what they already know about society that we're all evil we all want to humiliate them anyway so does mob justice work let's look at that because people they keep advocating for it keep advocating it so let's does it work there's a time a friend of mine told me that he was standing somewhere and some dude came to him and told him why are you stepping on me so the dude was kind of like i haven't stepped on you the idea was for to have my friend uh, engage in some kind of confrontation so that they can take his watch they can cause a crowd had already started forming and criminals use this tactic they know that the mob is vulgar the mob is he does not think and as soon as they point to somebody they can rob him actually by claiming that he's the thief and uh, and get away with it and that shows a lot about our society and about our tactics when criminals use the same tactics to steal that we are purporting that the that we're using them to prevent stealing then it should really open our minds it just open our minds and so the guy from Africa Kids Hassan says the priest will pray for our souls but it is not us he should be praying for he should be praying for the living for those whose lives are in a daily torment even criminals know we have a problem 
and then innocent people die somebody claims this guy is a mob he dies somebody said even it's better to let a thousand people go than to let one than to jail one innocent person and here we have innocent people dying as in it's just a repudiation of this of this method again it entrenches the problem uh the problem is the like in africa kills the sun he says the operation would have gone quite well uh if the superintendent of the police had fulfilled his part of the bargain the police in kenya we know they lend guns to these criminals at around five thousand and one of the reasons they kill this these children is to cover their tracks just to cover their tracks and it, as as we encourage this this kind of uh, attitude towards let's kill them let's what let, let's just beat them to death what happens is that we mask the police because the 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 thieves would never say where their guns come from the thieves would never say who allows them to operate in a certain area so the the facilitators the the cops they go scot free and they find other kids and then after those kids uh, get caught they kill those kids and they find other kids so the cycle continues so if you really want to end crime you really have to stop killing you just have to otherwise there's no other way anyway so i'm just about done there's another part uh so uh, in summary one of the reasons why this kind of attitude is wrong is that africa kills a son these people have hearts these people like uh, in africa kills a son he says in the love we shared i have found happiness a true resting place a shelter from the many storms that have buffeted my brief life criminals have hearts they have experiences we all do and uh, they just took a wrong path at some point in your life you may have taken a wrong path perhaps you're not where you want to be in your career perhaps you chose a wrong partner perhaps you had a kid too early we choose different paths in life and it comes back to haunt us we deserve a second chance and so do these kids okay so i'll just leave it at that and then what it does it encourages the brutal nature of society like he says why it not for the unfeeling nation we need to feel if you feel for the criminal uh we'll start feeling for the people uh, like if somebody comes to a government uh, hospital we'll we'll start feeling for them we won't ask them for bribes if you just start feeling for those who we consider the worst then we'll feel for everybody and we need to stop being an unfeeling society and you need to like he says taking sadistic pleasure in the loss of life we need to stop being sadist we need to stop and african americans just do that and africans also just do that when people rise they start despising the others when you we we take like uh, any anyway, drama happens we're happy and all that stuff any anyway, i just leave it that disorder in the nation uh let me just say something that he says uh in every facet of our lives in politics in commerce and in the professions robbery is the baseline and that's true and as soon as we just stop the robbery including robbing people of their lives then things will change as soon as we start feeling for each other then things will change as soon as we start sorting the issues and things will change until then tabaki hapo hapo uh, i just wanted to add this uh kensarorio is the one who wrote this story uh the narrator in this story is sazan and uh, jimba they were all killed by a firing squad kensarorio was killed by the nigerian military by hanging so some people say that he foreshadows his death and all that stuff so it is what it is everybody has worth the prostitute was the one who led the the jews into jerusalem there's somebody in the bible who was the son of a prostitute and they chased him away and they told him that you have nothing worthwhile in this life and after some time he was a great warrior so after some time they went back to him and they said we need you we need you because now some other group was coming to fight them and they needed them and he said now you have come to me 
after chasing me because I was the son of a prostitute. Everybody's life has worth. Start seeing that, and then things will change. So that's my video for today. Uh, I'll be doing videos on weekdays at every at 5 p.m. every day. Please be watching, and uh, have a have a good day. Bye bye. See you next week Monday at 5 p.m. Thank you for watching.